Hey everybody, it's Adam Tracy and I want to do a quick overview of offshore fund structure because I get a lot of questions about it and I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about how it really should be structured. So I've created this sort of rudimentary schematic here and hopefully you can follow along. But it starts with this master fund, right? And this is a BVI setup, but the same structure would apply if you're using Cayman Islands. And the master fund is what ultimately gets registered with the appropriate regulatory authority. So FSC, if you want to regulate, if you wanted to register like a incubator fund in BVI or a private fund with SEMA in the Cayman Islands. And this is where your prime broker, your bank, your exchange, crypto exchanges, your custody, primary accounts are all going to be set up and connected to, which is this master fund, because this is where all your trading activity is going to occur ultimately, right? And connected to that, obviously, is the fund manager. And so I have a BVI fund manager. What you'll see in practical parlance is that since 90% of all funds are offshore, um, the overwhelming majority of the fund at this master fund level are domiciled in Cayman Islands, while the overwhelming majority of fund managers are domiciled in BVI because BVI doesn't require a securities license to act as a fund manager, whereas in Caymans, it's a sort of complicated, long process with SEMA to get this fund manager license, right? So it's a very easy approved fund manager structure in BVI. So that's typically how you'd go. But um, nevertheless, the fund manager will act as the fund manager for the offshore feeder fund, domestic feeder fund, which we'll get into in a minute, and will receive profit allocations or fees, however you structure the, the compensation for the fund manager. So... <clears throat> Going to the domestic side, and this is like in for U.S. residents, the main reason that you kind that you need a feeder fund as opposed to like a direct line to this master fund is really for the convenience of the investor and for tax administration purposes, right? Because to go directly to the master fund and then allocate profits back to a U.S. investor, it's really sort of more tax work that you really would have to do as an investor. And a lot of people don't want the exposure. So this domestic feeder fund, typically you'll incorporate an LP in Delaware, limited partnership in Delaware, will accept funds from solely U.S. investors pursuant to a Reg D offering, which you'll need a specific private placement memorandum for that feeder fund. But the feeder fund, all it'll say is basically... Our strategy is to invest 100% of the proceeds of our fund, the feeder fund, into this master fund, right? So when you create the the uh, uh, private placement memorandum for the master fund, it's actually very simple to then create the master, the domestic feeder fund private placement memorandum because you're just gleaning. Right, you're just gleaning, and you're going to obviously have to account for the fact that you're selling limited partnership units versus private limited company units or shares at the master fund level. But it's a very simple thing. You're going to crib a lot of pieces and just put it together, and it'll it'll go quickly. On the other side, you have the BVI offshore fund, and this is where a lot of people screw up. People think you don't need this this offshore feeder fund, but you do. Right, you do, and so what you'll have is a sort of offshore, no U.S. citizens allowed or tax exempt U.S. citizens can get into it. And what they'll do is they'll invest through this feeder fund. And again, that feeder fund, its sole investment purpose is to invest 100% of the proceeds of its fund into the master fund. And then allocations are made out to the feeder funds on both sides and then to the investors, whether they be U.S. or not U.S. So it's actually not that wildly complex. I think, you know, there's a little bit of cost when you talk about the feeder fund setups. It's two hundred dollars in Delaware, about twelve fifty in BVI. But it's not overly complicated because, like I said, the offering memorandums are really quite simple, like for the feeder funds. Once you've got the master fund one, you're just like copy and pasting from here to there. So um definitely, you know, hit me up with any questions on this. Happy to go into greater detail and see if there's a better way, depending on your audience, to structure it. But this is the primary way to do it. And um, yeah, hit me up with any questions. Adam and Adam Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y dot I-O. And I will uh, talk to you next time. Cheers.